So in uh, chapter 6, module 6, we are still looking at linear regression. Um, but what we'll find is that um, in, in the case of, in particular, in the, in the case of um, numerical Um, then uh, what's great about linear regression is we can uh, expand it, uh, expand uh, linear regression to multiple uh, variables. Okay, so um, we can go to more than just uh, uh, one explanatory variable, so uh, we can expand linear regression to multiple variables, and a mix of numerical and yeah. categorical, categorical. So this is really nice. And, you know, in, in the last module, we, we saw how we could categorize numerical variables and, and go back to something like ANOVA or uh, chi-square. But in this case, if, if we have that numerical response, and, and actually it's possible to do this with... Um, a categorical response, but we're just going to worry about num numerical responses. Um, but we can uh, extend to multiple variables, and then partly because of that, uh, we can make those multiple multiple variables a, a mix of numerical and categorical. And and so, uh, for instance, uh, there is a um, a baby's file. In that file, it has uh, birth weight, birth weight, okay, uh, and gestation. Okay. So, how how long a pregnancy? Uh, it has parity. And I had to look that one up. Um, parity is um, uh, first or later uh, child. So um, the parity is, is just, you know, was this a firstborn or was it second, third, fourth, uh, something like that. Uh, age of the parent, of the mother. Okay, and as we look at these, you know, so birth weight, that's numerical. Uh, gestation, you know, how many, how many days was the woman pregnant? That's also numerical. Uh, parity, um, that's actually categorical because it's um, just was there a, sib a prior sibling or not, uh, or possibly even a prior pregnancy. Um, and uh, and then uh, age of the mother, well, that's numerical. Um, height of the mother, again, a numerical thing. Uh, weight of the mother, uh, again, numerical. And then um, whether or not they're a smoker, mother, not the child, um, is categorical. And so, um, you know, it, suppose you want to do some sort of study on birth weight, you know, so birth weight is your response. response. 
But when you when you think about um, confounding variables and so forth, you know, suppose what you really want to know is, you know, what effect does the age of the mother have on birth weight? And in other words, is there a dependency there with age? You know, does it? If you're worried about low birth weights or something, do you need to worry about the age of the mother? Well, in conducting a study like that, the the problem is, so so what you really want, say, is age for explanatory. I could have picked anything up there, but um, age for explanatory. Well, then the nice part about linear regression is, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, height could have something with it, because a taller person may have a, a longer baby, and a longer baby may weigh more. Uh, the weight of a person, um, the weight of the mother, well, if the mother is a heavier person, maybe maybe the baby is a heavier person as well. Uh, smoking, uh, definitely I've, I've heard that uh, smokers tend to have uh, smaller babies by a little bit. And... Um, uh, first or second child. Now it's it's interesting here. Um, if I recall from doing this from other semesters, uh, you get a slightly different answer than than uh, I thought one would get. Um, in that, I've always thought um, the later babies, uh, later as in siblings. Um, were larger, but I think these data actually point to um, later babies being smaller, which was news to me. Um, and and that's one of those things that, well, you know, the data are the data, and you and you look at them. And gestation certainly, uh, you know, if if a mother doesn't go full term, the baby's going to be smaller than it would have been had she gone full term. And, and so, obviously, I think the gestation period or how long the, the mother is, is carrying the baby is going to matter a lot with birth weight. But suppose you're most interested in age. That's the real explanatory variable you care about. Well, then, all these others, um, gestation, parity, height... Uh, weight, smoking, or smoker. Uh, I think I got them all, all right? Parity, uh, gestation, yep, yep. Okay, those are confounding variables. Um, now, are they really confounding? I don't know, right? I mean, does height matter? I don't know. Um, and, and so, though, you would probably want to take data on all those things and possibly others that you might think of, uh, socioeconomic status, those kinds of things. Um, and, and so, you know, you could just keep going forever and ever on these variables, but um, uh, as, as we look at linear regression, the, the neat thing is is we can just kind of throw all these variables, all of them, at once at the uh, model and let the model begin sorting it out. And, and then it will take some interaction with us. Um, but that is the nifty thing. And, and so we'll look at details uh, of these ideas uh, as we um, go through more videos. But... Uh, uh, I think that's probably it for this video. We just want to, well, I guess I should look at the model. Remember what we had was uh, something like our response. And so oh, we'll call it Y. And, you know, you all would tend to say something like MX plus B uh, was the model we were looking for before. Now, you know, our, our text... I think uses um, uh, something like uh, I think
think they use B X plus A or uh, something like that for our slope and intercept. Um, now me, I, I tend to like to go with the Greek letters just because that's what you tend to see in, actually in most math texts. So we started with uh, something like this, uh, beta and alpha. Um, now what we're going to is that we're going to look at y equals uh, some beta 1 x1, where that's one of our variables, x1, uh, plus beta 2, a slope for x2, plus uh, beta 3, a slope for x3, plus, and, and up to as many as we need, uh, plus beta, uh, I think we use a k in our text, uh, xk for the total number of variables uh, and then plus alpha. And uh, what we'll do is look separately at each slope and we'll do a hypothesis test. You know, H0 will be that uh, beta i is equal to zero and the alternative will be that some beta i, one of the, any one of those, um, is not equal to zero. So it's the same thing, but we'll look uh, variable by variable at those slopes and, and try to determine uh, whether um, those variables matter or not. So if we threw all this into a, a regression with all these variables up here, uh, what we may find is some of the slopes ought to be zero, in which case, oh, yeah, those aren't really uh, variables that matter. Okay, so, so that's where we're going with this. We're going to look at lots of different variables all thrown together and uh, see what we come up with.